Hi, it's Mickey Dolenz here. You're listening to Inspirato Projecto. Two twenty-five p.m. Uh, today is <clears throat> the twentieth, January twenty. I just got off the phone. Uh, started at eleven p. Eleven a.m. Eleven a.m. We had a f- was that three or four hours um, conversation with Joseph Garagier, who is an author and. Um, He runs a site called Comic Book News, I think. And so that um, was really a really good conversation. I mean, we just kept bouncing off each other, asking a lot of questions. I told a lot of stories um, of my days doing extra work. Wow. That was cool to talk about some of those stories I haven't talked about in a long time. It was uh, very... Very, very enlightening. He, uh, He has seizures at night, and he was trying to describe them to me. And he's writing a book about it. And, um, which I think is just phenomenal because I haven't seen, well, I've, I don't think I've really seen too much media about people who have seizures or, um, epilepsy, whatnot. So that, that would, uh, actually there's a TV show. <clears throat> what TV show? Um, it's called Utopia. Yeah, I think it's called Utopia. You only get a new pair of shoes on, or shoes that you haven't worn in a while, and you go to walk in them, and you feel a little uncertain. Feel like maybe they have a different weight to them than you're used to. Oh, oh. no. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, they're still here, I think. Um,. I was worried that the local shop here had closed down. It had that look about it. But, uh, yeah, I'm wearing these shoes, and it's like they're lighter than I'm used to wearing. And so I just feel like it's affecting my walk, my gait. That might be a good... That might be a good uh, talk show. What's my gait? It's just people walking. And maybe people who want to change how they walk. How to do that. Instructions on how to better place their feet when they're walking. How far apart is the most, you know, ideal uh, width and length apart from each other? Is the idea to try to walk with your legs as close to each other as possible? Is the idea to try to step as far as you can? Do you lead with your heel or do you lead with your toe? How long do you keep your, uh, let's see. How long do you keep your, let's see. Yeah, how long do you keep your foot on your toe before you surrender it to the heel of the other foot? Oh, that's all right. That's cool. (laughs) This guy, this guy almost ran me over in his Mini Cooper. Oh my God. He didn't see me. Uh, <laughs> man, I'm so excited to see this bicycle shop over here uh, do good. For the longest time, they're having a tricky time trying to sell bicycles. And then once uh pandemic came around, it's interesting how something so drastic can happen. And it affects so many different people in so many ways. 
some can thrive during something like that. Uh, others, um, some can thrive. Some others, you know, fail or 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 fall apart in some fashion. It's really it's really how um, someone is choosing to define the situation. I mean, it just goes to show us that, like, in in any and in all situations, there are those who have figured out ways to thrive, and then those who are struggling and can't seem to. Um, oh my God! Of course, a Jurassic Park vehicle, a Jurassic Park. Oh my God! We were talking about Jurassic Park. In the, uh, I told him as soon as this, as soon as we're done with this, this. Uh, as soon as we're done with this conversation, we're going to start seeing a lot of synchronicities that relate exactly to the things we talked about. And we talked about Jurassic Park. Oh, my God. Because I, I brought up the idea to him about when I first saw Jurassic Park. And I just came up with that. Out of, you know, I was just like, when I first saw Jurassic Park and I saw them running or fighting against basically a CGI creature, an invisible creature. Like, they had to just react against a green screen and pretend that they were fighting some T-Rex or something. But that was all that acting. They had to act against a green screen. And ever since I saw that, I had thought how cool that would be to be able to have a green screen. You're just like, you're like, oh, no, we're being attacked by a T-Rex or something. And so I brought that up um, because it, it, that's, how, that's what ended up happening sort of like with Max Neptune. Um, I got to do green screen stuff. And then he goes, well, I just the other day I interviewed... Um, Someone who worked on the new Jurassic Park movie, Jurassic, I think it's called Jurassic Island or something. And then something happened when I was talking with him about, about UFOs and stuff. And then he goes, oh, yeah, I'm a, and, um, in about a week, I'm going to interview um, this woman named, like, Debbie or something and her friend Steve. And I go, Stephen Bassett? He goes, that might be it. I go, Stephen Bassett? He goes, yeah. And so I knew I had I'd gone to some of those secret UFO um, meetings with Stephen Bassett's paradigm research group and so you know i was able to share some of those stories and he's like oh my god you could be my co-host i said oh my god that'd be great he's like yeah you could be my co-host when Stephen bassett's on i said that's great so that's gonna be so cool oh my god anyway um time for me to go in uh get some groceries i will talk more later thanks for listening to inspirato projecto This is a song about a very suspicious person. I see what you're doing now. Oh, yes, 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 I see what you're doing now. See what you're doing now. Oh, yes, I 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 chasing wow sounds close things like that all the time. Wow. Interesting. 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 (laughs) 
So the time is now 10.57 a.m. I'm sitting here with Sophie. Jenny's uh, boyfriend likes dog. Little Sophie. I like to call her Sophelia. Sophelia. She's always smiling. She's got this big smile on her face all the time. Tiny little dog. And uh, <laughs> just a tiny little dog. I think a chihuahua. And uh, if you're not next to her, like she's just always looking around for you. Where are you? Where is this person at? Where are they at? Where are they at? Uh, it's great. On uh, TikTok, I was able to, there's a filter on there where you can turn your face into an alien. And uh, it's really great. It turns you, gives you a great green extraterrestrial face. And I've used this filter on Sophie. <laughs> she must look enough like a human uh, for it to work. And, uh, you just see her big smiley face and with this big green, um, alien, alien face. It's just so funny. Her big smile. Um, I just watched the documentary walking with the tall whites with Charles J. Hall. And these are what was talked about by Paul Hellier. Um, he was the Secretary of Defense in Canada when during the citizens' disclosure hearing that Stephen Bassett put together. Uh, during that citizens' disclosure meeting that happened uh, about maybe five years ago or something, uh, Paul Hellier talked about the tall whites and because he had heard the story from Charles Shaw, Charles Charles Hall, Charles J. Hall, Charles J. Hall, uh, worked up by, by Nellis Air Force Base, um, and he was sort of used as a test human for these for these beings um, to learn how to interact with with other humans and. Uh, he didn't realize this till later that he was basically their their test um their test dummy <laughs> so to speak and uh gosh so so intriguing so, such an intriguing documentary and i just put up a piece of it where he's uh talking about uh the tall whites and it's on amazon by the way you can check it out on amazon walking with the tall whites and uh, I recorded a piece of it where he's talking about the Tall White's planet. And I put that up onto TikTok. And this woman who I've had a lot of synchronicities with so far in the comment sections where she's like, oh, my gosh, no way. I was just thinking about that. Or, oh, no, my gosh, I can't believe it. that's I was just talking about that. Um, she commented on on my TikTok video. She goes, oh, yeah, the Tall White's live out in Las Vegas. I know some of them. And I'm thinking, you know, you personally know the tall whites. This is worth a field trip. I mean, this is, if I could interview a tall white, if I could talk directly with them and find out, you know, find out certain things. I'd have so many questions for them. I would love it too if they let me take photos with them and they let me take videos of them. I mean, that would be awesome. I, 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 things are, I mean, synchronicities are happening faster and faster. More and more of these situations. Um, are just presenting themselves. I mean, <laughs> that, that would be crazy if I could go out there and interview these actual extraterrestrials. What kind of questions do you have for them? You know, like what do you, what do you ask them? I'm sure a physicist would have tons of questions. I'm sure someone who's a botanist would have tons of questions. I'm sure someone who uh, um, is a uh, an animal, you know, biologist would have a lot of questions. Gosh. 
like oh my gosh that just would be nuts man so i'm going to keep you up to date on what happens with this and uh if or when that comes about because whew, that would just be fascinating Absolutely fascinating. So it's 1.50 p.m. We are watching Sophie again. And I'm taking her out for a little walk around the neighborhood. I'll probably see if I can make some uh, TikToks. I brought my king of 5D glasses. <laughs> Buddy. You're so funny, Sophia. All right, here we go. Oh, yeah. All right. So I just saw that documentary, or I'm still watching it actually, about Phil Schneider, which is interesting. It's, um, Distributed by Uncorked. Uncorked is the same company that distributed uh, the Halloween Horrors, Legend of Fall Creek, and Black Pumpkin. And what's interesting is... Um, oh, wow. It's a windy one. Wow, it smells great out here, though. Oh, my God, it smells so good. I'm, an, I'm not going to put my mask on until I'm next to someone. That's all there is to it. I got to smell this. I got to smell this freshness. God, it smells beautiful out here. Um, so this documentary called The Underground, Director's Cut, all about Philip Schneider, his work on the uh, black budget, um, which is like trillions of dollars that the Pentagon uses to investigate UFOs, extraterrestrials, et cetera, et cetera, so, so forth. So he worked with, with them, and uh, he has some stories where he's met some inner earth um, extraterrestrials, and he would go around and he would lecture. And so this, what happened was he, um, he happened to have uh, quite a few of friends of his. Um, they, you know, who all were a part of this, um, like 11 of them committed suicide in the strangest ways, and so you constantly tell people, look, I'm not, you know, I'm not suicidal, um, I'm um, totally fine, if I wind up dead, you know, it's probably because the information I'm giving out, and sure enough, he ended up, he ended up dead. Now, this documentary is about the um, investigation into his death, who could have possibly did it, um, you know, they actually have the real paperwork, um, the undoctored paperwork, and so the whole documentary is about that. And there's a, there's a great um, piece on there about Nikolai Tesla and uh, this document about Nikolai Tesla and the uh, Philadelphia experiment, which is when that whole uh, ship disappeared way back in the day. Al Bielik is the guy who was on the Philadelphia experiment ship. That's a whole, that's a whole side story, but... They always suspected if Tesla was a part of this, and sure enough, they found paperwork that, that, that connected him to it. And so, um, just so fascinating, so fascinating when you learn about this stuff. So what, what's equally crazy is that it's produced by this woman named Darcy Weir. Darcy Weir, um, Darcy, Darcy Weir is a... She's the, she's the producer of this thing, and she's, she's like a ufologist and whatnot. And her and Steve Bassett are going to be guests. Her and Steve Bassett are going to be guests on the uh, podcast, Inner Child Podcast, which I think I was telling you about. I was interviewed for Inner Child Podcast by Literary Joe the other day. And uh, he runs the website uh, Comic Book 
news, I think, or comic book movie news or something like that, comic movie news. Um, but he has this podcast, Inner Child Podcast. And so um, turns out that, like, next week he's going to have a um, an interview with this woman, Darcy Weir, and Stephen Bassett. And so he invited me to, if I wanted to be a... Um, if I want to be a co-host, what are you doing? <laughs> he asked me if I want to be a co-host on this podcast. Um, since I, you know, since I actually went to uh, one of Stephen Bassett's um, secret UFO meetings in um, um, Rena Del Rey. Hey, uh, so he, so yeah, Stephen Bassett's going to be one of the guests. And so he's like, oh yeah, do you want to co-host? So I'm like, oh my gosh, that's crazy. That's that's amazing. I can talk to this to Stephen Bassett about you know the the uh, par- paradigm research group uh, meetings, and then also talk to Darcy Weir about this documentary that just came out. So it was just such interesting um, connections there with that, and just blew my mind that um, <laughs> that kind of synchronicity was just like, holy cow, are you kidding me? So I ended up. Um, getting an email from him. So on Wednesday, so on Wednesday, I'm going to be co-hosting this podcast with him. And uh, I'd love to get that audio, put it out here on Inspirato Projecto. It's so interesting, you know, when you, when you're not, you, when you don't have an animal, when you don't have a dog and you're not used to taking him out for walks. I think I was t- t- telling you this before, like, it's just so interesting how, um, so interesting how uh come here come here come here oh 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 here no here come here no come here come here your arm is your arm is caught um come here hold on hold on a second stop stop right there stop stop all right there we go um so yeah, it's it's just incredible. All these little synchronicities, the way the way that these things match up. And so Wednesday, yeah, I'm going to be talking with these folks. And uh, man, it's just so so exciting. It's it's really interesting when you see pieces of your life reflect back into your world. Because I think I was telling you, I, I was going to do, um, and I'm still going to, some TikTok videos about Stephen Bassett, about meeting him and the uh, the PRG meetings and whatnot, which I've talked a little bit about on this, this podcast about. So that's going to be really interesting to see, um, how, how that evolves, man. Also, we got the, uh, Kapow IFF.com, Kapow Intergalactic Film Festival coming up and, uh, that's coming out February tw- uh, 19th through the 28th. And so it's just interesting how this just so perfectly matched up together where, you know, we always call it the Kapow Intergalactic Film Festival instead of international. And I just love that, that whole idea that here we are with the Galactic Federation and all this, you know, UFO talk and everything. This is just the perfect year for it to be, um, you know, now that, th- now that everyone has, has learned how to go more uh, digital with their stuff, People are more used to just watching their Netflix at home and, and just, you know, being being at home and just watching media. Um, it's, it's just so perfect how it all came about. And I really would like to get some of these interesting people I've been talking to on TikTok into some of these live seminar type of situations. Um, so I could kind of do like a live Inspirato Projecto um, interview or question and answer type thing. So we'll see how all that how all that evolves. We'll see. Um, one thing I'm looking into f- for Filmocracy because all this I think I was telling you this is all going to be broadcast on Filmocracy.com, which is the um, service that has been set up. Uh, the whole team, these people have all put, you know, who knows how many hours into creating this kind of thing. And, um, 
they're um, they're just really they got all the framework, you know. And so you're going to sign on to filmocracy.com. Um, you're going to find Capel Film Festival on there. Then you're going to go through there, and then it, there's going to be like a little town. And then you can go into a building, and then you can go into a. Uh, I mean, it's just it's going to be really interesting to see how this all evolves. And the audience can actually rate the movies, the projects that they're watching. They can actually, uh, uh, you know, t- type up their comments, type about the stuff that they like, um, uh, give compliments about uh, characters, uh, camera work, soundtrack, all that cool stuff, production design. And so... Um, So, yeah, it's just just so uh, so interesting, so interesting, man. How it all evolves, how it all comes about, it never ceases to amaze me. Okay, right here. Yep. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah, check it out. Check it out. The Underground. Check out the... uh, Walking with the Tall Whites. Check out that one. Uh, Jeez. So many good ones. So much really intriguing information. And that Black Vault information, I ended up finding out the Black Vault um, that they said that they released, which was all this hidden CIA stuff, that's not a part of the... The uh, countdown to disclosure, that's not a part of it. So uh, the king of 5D has indeed started back up with his countdown to disclosure. I believe yesterday it was 159, so that means today is 158. So uh, there'll be a most likely a video of the king of 5D on TikTok later today. If you're on TikTok, find me under Inspirato Projecto. It's all one word. And uh, let me know that you found me through the podcast. I always get, a, I always, I always like that. I think that's always the coolest thing. That's how Clay and um, Mr. Turetsky and Maria Humphreys and all these wonderful people, Martha's Place. Um, wait, come here, come here. Uh, God's gift is His word. Um, Tanika. Tini, tini, you know, all these wonderful folks um, that I've met through this have we become friends on other platforms. Instagram, TikTok, um, Facebook, Twitter, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, little Nelly's getting, little, oh, little baby's getting, little Sophie. Sophia's getting tired, little tiny pups. Oh, we took you for a really long walk, huh? Yeah. Yeah. We're almost back. So, yeah, man. Lots of really intriguing information out there. Things just busting at the seams, man. Busting at the seams. Keep your eyes peeled, okay? Keep your eyes peeled. Because you never know what the universe is going to show you, delight you with, insight you with, synchronize you with, etc. And etc. And forsooth. <laughs> and soon forth. Forsooth, soon forth. Forsooth, 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 forsooth.
Here's your fun fact. Your dog or cat can read your moods. If you're sad or under stress, you may also notice a difference in your dog or cat's behavior. Stay tuned to Inspirato Projecto for more fun facts. Okay, it's 1.16 p.m. <clears throat> Today is the 24th. By the way, yesterday was 1, 2, 3, if you want to think of it that way. January 23rd, 2005, 2021. So when you add the 2 and the 2 and the 1 together, you get a 5. So think about this. Yesterday was 1, 2, 3, 5. That's the beginning of the Fibonacci sequence. Oh, so cool, huh? So I ended up finding out that Darcy Weir is actually a man... Um, because I finished that uh, uh, the underground movie, and just a just a great great movie. So yeah, now I've got some material to talk to uh, Darcy Weir and and Stephen Bassett about, obviously for that podcast for the Inner Child podcast. Also, um, what was brought to my attention today was my Lord, my buddy Lawrence sent me this TED talk that was given by OK, the the band OK Go and it's all about creativity how they find creativity and there's so much involved in their talk that uh, like he talks about how in in high school he had his he was he would play games with his eyes and looking at um the pictures on his walls and stuff and how he'd get a lot of ideas, and that was very similar to what happened with how he made the movie Nocturnal Jerk. Um, my buddy Barry just had all of these different, it was like a collage of all these different things up on his wall, and that ended up becoming sort of what things were going to happen in the movie. So there's that. Now, the other interesting thing is during the TED Talk, they performed two songs. One of them is called This Too Shall Pass, and in that music video, um, well, they did a, f- a few music videos for it. One of them was a Rube Goldberg machine. It was a huge Rube Goldberg machine. And these guys had to be in just the right place at just the right time. And um, I did a remake of that song, like a folk song, just me and a guitar. And I spliced together, I edited together that video, a different video they did where um, but the same song where they're like mar- doing a marching band thing and there are all these people in ghillie suits and that was a crazy one. Then there was a version where he's singing with the church choir uh, and then there was um, something else, some other thing where it was, oh, it, it was a video from the company, the company itself that helped make that um, OK Go video, the company that u- utilized uh, the facility uh, who had the facility and, you know, sort of brought that whole idea to, uh, to, to fruition. So I, I made a music video where I spliced all these things together. And there's a certain way that I sing in this music video. And this, this was probably 2010 or something. Let's see. Actually, I'll play, I'll play the, uh, the differences for you. It's interesting because there's just a certain way Let's see. There's this part where it breaks down. Oh, hold on. Let me let me get you this part. Okay, here we go.
listen to that chorus. So, okay, so there's that version. This too shall pass. Ted talk. Okay, go. All right, so now... All right, so now we're going to hear their their version, them singing it. And we're going to hear... Um, we're going to hear them singing it, and we're going to hear some interesting uh, parallels here. So it's just interesting. They they did this acoustic version, <clears throat> and then they had this. It's just very very interesting. Um, because the, I'm I'm not sure when their original version came out, but I made mine in 2010. So that's crazy. Ten years ago. What's interesting too, is that it opens up with a little piece of this alien interview. Oh man, that was so cool. That was so fun. But yeah, man, that, that, that like, whoa, that was just really interesting to see that. Wow. So interesting. You know, I think we're going to go into the uh, voicemails here. We're going to see if, uh, I know man behind the machine always leaves voicemails in here. We're going to look into the archives. We're going to look in here. We're going to dip in here, answer some questions. You too, by the way, can contribute to, uh, Inspire Projecto podcast. You can call the hotline 561-203-9179, or you can call the hotline, you can, um, if you're on Anchor, you can go directly to my page. You can leave a message on the voicemail. Uh, if you want, you can email me, inspiratorprojecto at gmail.com. You can email me your audio, and I'll play it on here. So uh, let's, let's go to see what the man behind the machine has to, has to say. Hey, Inspirato Man here. Thank you for your message about where the sound come from. I just did an episode on... Man experiments with AI music. Some company approached me and developed an AI program. Uh, we could generate songs, use their algorithms. And uh, it all started with this idea that the musician gets tired and uninspired at times. So if you can have a machine that programs, works 24-7, it doesn't lose its ambition creativity so you hear this on this episode what are you thinking about um, ai music and how can it complement your world this company who let me use their ai program they know if you're using it or not and they texted my email and said we just want to know is everything okay we see you're not using the program well they disabled some download functions on it so I told them that, anyways, it can be somewhat realistic, but a lot of it is classically range type music by this machine, as well as music that you probably would hear on a sea shanty, that's the genre, as well as contemporary music and kind of um, fantasy type music for this AI and then there's an electronic function and then they added ambient a couple of months ago so I'll let you know here's some examples of my AI music Here's another one. I know nothing too exciting, but it's not like it's Mozart or anything. 
album that's boring. Except for this vinyl record in here that the AI put in. Still has a long way to go. You know, in terms of generating, it's not going to generate a masterpiece. But then again. Wow, man, that is incredible to think that <laughs> we've reached this point with AI creation. So you could just make music like that. You could just. It's just what it's I'm imagining it's just sifting through an ocean of all these different sounds and vibrations and things that have been out there on the Internet. It's probably raking in all of those as as um, influences, inspirations, ideas as to what direction to go. And then now here it is. I can't remember if I was saying this, if I told you about this or not, but there's this app called AIMI. Maybe it's pronounced AI me, AI me, um, or I my or I me, Amy, I me, I me, I am I, am I, A I M I. Oh, A I M I. Maybe that's what it is. A I M I, like I am A I. A I M I. Wow, interesting. But yeah, that's a really great. Um, I, I, I haven't found a way. I don't think you can download what songs you made on there, but you can um, make some sounds. Also, there's a really interesting app that I downloaded here called uh, what is it? Maze Tools Mutant Maze Tools. I think it's made by Maze Tools. It's called Mutant. It's a it's a music making app, and it just shows like this, like like oct uh, octagon or hexagon or something, and you you could spin it around, and you can move your fingers around inside of this thing and choose different things: the bass, the synth, the different things, and you can choose the different parameters of what it's going to sound like, and it sounds sounds really interesting. You can save it. Um, Just, just so fascinating that we have that capability at this point. Here's your fun fact. The average dog can run about 19 miles per hour. Greyhounds are the fastest dogs on earth and can run at speeds of 45 miles per hour. Stay tuned to Inspirato Projecto for more fun facts. Thank you, Henry D. Horse, for that fun fact. How about you guys, uh, listener? How fast do you think that you can run? How fast do you think your pets can run? Uh, what kind of pets do you have? I've been noticing some accounts on TikTok, people who have pet, uh, uh, like, pet uh what are those called sugar sugar gliders pet sugar gliders uh pet crows a pet ostrich uh some people who have some exotic pets um there was one where i saw this little tiny monkey just grasping tightly onto uh just hugging ever so tightly this little baby puppy and it was in its little diaper and it just did not want to let go of this little baby dog and uh so do you do you have a pet like that how fast do you have a pet monkey how fast does your pet a pet monkey run um give me a call 561-203-9179 that is the hotline you can leave it on the voicemail no no one's even going to pick it up you can leave your message on the voicemail, and we will include it here on Inspirato Projecto. Or if you want, you can email inspiratoprojecto at gmail.com. Mm. Your audio, and we will play it on here. All right? I promise you. It's fun. I, I, I just love it. This is a variety show, and I want to get, get you included. Um, maybe you got an interesting dream, a synchronicity, a UFO abduction story. 
let us know. I want to be able to play them here. All right. Uh, what's next? All right, it's 335. Today is 24th. January 24th. And uh, it's been a while, but I'm chomping on some Bazooka Joe bubblegum. And um, what's great about Bazooka Joe is that they, they still have the comics in there. So here's a great comic, Bazooka Joe and his gang. This is number 18 of 48. You just think, there are 48 of these little comics hiding out there in Bazooka Joe's. If you have them all collected, let me know. Let me know here on Inspirato Projecto. Send me an email, inspiratoprojecto at gmail.com. All right, so there's a guy standing out in front of a store. I think it's Bazooka Joe himself. Here's a side note. They've never made a Bazooka Joe movie, have they? Maybe it's time for a Bazooka Joe movie. Where it's just, it's all based on these comics. Plain and simple. It could be a cartoon. It could be a live action. It doesn't matter. But in this one, he's uh, standing out in front of a a men's store. He's standing out in front of there. He's like admiring a um, pair of pants or something. Oh, it's a suit. He's looking at a mannequin. That's what it is. And he goes, he, and he, you see him, and he's talking to the guy. He's like, I'd like to try on that suit in the window. He goes, all right. Well, all right, but don't you think it would be better to use the dressing room? Boom, boom, shh. Do you get it? I'd like to try that suit on in the window. Well, all right, but don't you think it would be better to try it in the dressing room? Oh, no, wouldn't it be, don't you think it would be better to use the dressing room? So he thought he wanted to dress into the suit in the window, which would, which would have been equally as funny. A fun prank, if you will. Um, so here's the... No way. No. No way. Oh, no way. No way. No. Oh my God, dude. I got to keep this. Okay, so this is a fortune. You'll become rich and famous, but only if you believe you can. You'll become rich and famous, but only if you believe you can. You can. I believe it. I love this. Now it says here, go back to the, go back to the future and enter the code at bazookajoe.com. There's a code on here. Oh my God. Wow, I think this is, I think this is a, uh, I think this is actually an equation. If you only knew how appropriate this was. Here it is, it's U8U. You. No, I'm not going to tell you, because then you're going to enter it in the thing. But it starts with U8U. You. Oh my god, I've absolutely got to hang on to this. I did the Bashar transformative shifting cube again yesterday. I'll do it again today. Um, last time I did it was like four or five days before, uh, yesterday. And so I'll do the transformative shifting cube again today, but uh, I'll tell you, the synchronicities are just flowing, flowing like mad. You ate you. This is, I don't know how often I've talked about Usu on here. Oh, my God. You know, it's so interesting. I've been thinking so much about the idea of getting this particular book uh, made and published. It could even be a series. Um, and it has to do with this. I can't go any further into it. Because um, it's just got to be something that is created. But this is a, definitely a message from the universe. It's interesting because I just sent off the transformative shifting cube exercise 
to my buddy Lawrence, who, who I share a lot of synchronicities with. And, uh, I sent him the transformative shifting cube. And he basically, it's basically a meditation. About a 15 meditation. Could be 20 minute meditation. But it's, it's, a. Uh, I think that's why having meditation is so important. Like when we're growing up, we tend to, whether we believe it or not, um, others usually point it out to us. But we go into those zone states where we just kind of check out for a little bit and we're like and you know we're just lost in our imagination that happened to me frequently growing up and meditation making time for that it's like you're making time for yourself to allow yourself to just stare off into space you know a lot of folks are like well I don't have time to meditate I don't have time for that well you don't have time to give yourself a break to give yourself a little piece of you know rest of just zoning out into your imagination and that's what happens with the transformative shifting cube you have these each each of these intentions and um i told him man once you start doing this your synchronicities are going to multiply you're going to start seeing every single sign everything is an omen every numerological um language that's going on you're going to be tuning in directly into the all that is into that bigger version of you so to speak and um, so it's just like, whoa, that's incredible. Just my, mind, mind explosive when you think about that. Oh, man, when you start seeing it happen, things been amplified. And right there, the Bazooka Joe wrapper, that said a lot to me. Um, oh, my God. Okay. I'll talk to you more later. This is astounding. I did not expect this. I almost was not even going to open up that gum and chew it, but I just decided to. And look at that. That's the gift that I get. The, un- the, 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 the door I open with this unexpected... Um, with this unexpected... You know, I always talk about that with Dungeons and Dragons. There's that unexpected secret passage but you got to cast a spell in order to see it so interesting this is one of those things all right i'll talk to you more later holy cow thank you for listening to inspirato projecto i gotta say i had an extraordinary conversation with uh today's the 27th 309 p.m here uh, Nikolai Tesla would be proud. He loves 3, 6, and 9. So here I am talking to you at uh, 309er, 127, 2021. Uh, I had a talk with Stephen Bassett. Uh, today, I was a co-host on a podcast. Darcy Weir was on there talking about um, a little bit. He got a chance to talk a little bit about his uh, documentary about Sasquatch and then also his uh, documentary about Phil Schneider called The Underground, which is on Amazon. So uh, so Literary Joe, who, who interviewed me for the uh, in, what was it? Uh, Inner Child podcast, he, he invited me to co-host. And uh, so we had, it was like a two hour, two hour recording. And that, uh, there was a lot of insight there. So in the next podcast, I'll talk more about that. And uh, we're going to close out here with some extraordinary words from Richard Wilson and the Mad Shelley production team. Thank you so much for listening to Inspirato Projecto. Hey, Kurt, this is Richard Wilson from Mad Shelley Films, and we have a message for you. This, this is Mad Shelley Films, and, and you are listening to Inspirato Projecto Radio. When you're lost, who do you want to find you? In what form does this creature manifest? And at what time in the night does he come for you? Every year, millions of hardworking Americans experience cosmic encounters with moderate to severe disorientation. Christor can help. 
Crystor is a handheld calcite defibrillator capable of generating surges and binary distress signals throughout the Sigma Quadrant. Crystor is not for everyone. Some aquatic mammals have experienced dizziness and confusion while using Crystor. Side effects do include blood glow, tear mist, and purpling of the skin and eyes. Tell your doctor if you are pregnant and have not had intercourse within the past 18 months, or if you are nursing and have no children of your own. Crystor has not been approved for simians or micropachyderms. Ask your shaman if Crystor is right for you. Isn't it your turn to bear the crystal?